Of all the push devices available, the simple push stick is my least favorite because it gives you the least amount of control over the wood as you're pushing it through the saw. This little notch is all you have that contacts the wood. It gives you no directional control over the wood. When you push it through, you more or less hope that it doesn't turn away from the fence and into the blade. A push handle, like the saw aid here from Stotts, gives you a lot more control over the wood. In addition to the step that catches the wood, it has this long nose piece that gives you a lot of grip over the wood and lets you steer the wood against the fence to make sure it doesn't wander away. Push blocks, like those normally provided with joiners, are good at the table saw for wider stock, sheet stock, and thin material like this. It lets you get a good grip of the material and have very good control over it as you move it across the blade. For rip cuts, we need a straight edge that we can put against the fence. That allows us to move the wood through the saw straight without it rocking. If it moves just a little bit, we're either going to ruin the cut, or if you don't have the blade guard and splitter installed, it can kick out. Whether you're using a standard miter gauge that came with the saw, or an aftermarket piece like this Inker 1000 SE, you can make it more effective by adding an extended fence. It gives you more surface area to support the wood. To make it easier to hold the wood steady against the fence by adding a strip of 150 grit sandpaper. It gives the wood more bite and prevents it from slipping in and out, particularly when you're making miter cuts. When more than one piece has to be cut the same length, using a gauge block on a fence is a good way to do that and leave yourself space between the blade and the fence so the cutoff piece can drop in it without getting trapped. When installing a gauge block, we want to make sure we have it far enough back on the fence that we can bring the wood in, make contact with it to set the length of the piece, but when we move it into the saw, it leaves the gauge block before it contacts the blade. In addition to the sandpaper on the miter gauge, we can increase the accuracy of our miter cuts by laying out the cut line and making the first cut about a sixteenth of an inch outside of that line. We'll cut a little bit long, then we'll go back and cut it on the line so there's very little material to be removed. that second cut, there's hardly any material being removed, there's very little pull on the piece. When making a bevel cut using the rip fence as a guide, it's important to have a straight edge on the piece so you can push the wood through straight and there's no rocking. This is especially true when the blade tilts towards the fence, because as we push it through, this piece will be trapped between the fence and the blade. If we hold it against the fence and just push it through straight, everything will be fine. When this kind of cut is completed, the waste piece will be right near the blade. So you want to make sure that the blade stops completely before you pick it up. It could ride against the blade and get thrown off the saw. Generally, it doesn't come off very fast or it will just bump it out. But I always stand to the side of it when I'm making the cut anyways, just to be sure. When using a miter gauge to make a bevel cut, it's important that the wood stays motionless as we push it through the saw. Here again, the sandpaper on the face helps accomplish that. We make the cut, we push it through, shut the saw off, and wait for it to stop before we pull the material back or retrieve the cutoff piece. Cutting a rabbit or dado on even a large rectangular piece of wood is fairly easy. We have a lot of table to work with and we can put a work support on the outfeed side to catch it as we push it across the blade. Trying to cut a rabbit or dado across the width of that same rectangular piece is much more difficult. We have far less surface against the fence to keep it steady as we move it across the saw. All the drag from out on this end of the board wants to cock it. And as soon as we do that, we either ruin the cut or could actually throw the board out of the saw.